it's a great pleasure to try and multitask and not being able to. So. Uh, here we are. So I'm sorry you have to use this uh, because either you, you, you can either use this or you'll have this. The other one doesn't work anymore. Uh, and I was saying it's a great pleasure to welcome Elia Sartori, who will be trying to help us understanding the financial crisis in an extended rational expectation framework. Thank you. Okay, so thank you for inviting me. And I'm going to present the, my master thesis I'm going to defend in a couple of weeks. So uh, I, I want to, to model the, in, in my master thesis, I want to apply some decision and game theoretic concepts to, the, to a macroeconomic framework. And in particular, as the title tries to make clear, I want to study the, the, the events that led to the recent 2008 financial crisis as the outcome of an equilibrium decision making. To do so, I cannot rely on the concept of rational expectations equilibrium because of its assumption of knowledge of the true data generating process. Uh, so, um, indeed, all the models uh, that stand inside this rational expectation assumption have to invoke some sort of bounded rationality from the policymaker or uh, some distorted system of incentives uh, leading to political short-termism to explain why the policymaker did not uh, prevent the private sector from engaging in those uh, uh, activities. So I don't want to deny the importance of, of those contributions, but my aim is to model the financial crisis as the outcome of equilibrium. So, uh, as a background, I want to give you uh, the, the main assumption of the rational expectation to try to motivate with why this, is, uh, this cannot be used to, to, to understand the economic contingency leading to the crisis. So, basically, what happens in, uh, in, equilibrium, in rational expectations equilibrium is that the, the, um, the requirement is to equate all subjective distribution to an objective uh, distribution implied by the model. In, um, in equilibrium. But importantly, from this quotation from, uh, from Sims, all equilibria depend on events that are never observed in, uh, in, uh, in equilibrium. Uh, basically, depend on the beliefs and on how the, the government is going to react to, uh, to, to things that do not usually occur. So, uh, in rational expectations, this implies that all the, the agents believe disappear are as a components of the theory and the intelligent design, design uh, literature that builds upon the rational expectation concept ignores the distinction between normative and positive economics. Indeed, if everything that is uh, led by a learning dynamics produces, uh, makes only good things, meaning correct things, to survive, then the, the test of time and practice will be, will be, will be passed only by, by, by beliefs that are optimal in a, for, for control. But uh, some theories of out of equilibrium learning and the uh, recent uh, evidence do not, uh, uh, do not comply to, to, such, uh, to such assumptions. So, what are we going to, to assume is, uh, is uh, we are going to relax the, the rational expectation assumption of knowledge of the data generating process and build, uh, and, and, and build the, the model upon the concept of, uh, of self-confirming equilibrium, which requires only consistency of the beliefs we have with signals received after choosing an action that's justified by the belief itself. So here I have highlighted two words. I should have highlighted three because also justified is crucial. First, let me start by justified. What I mean by justified is exactly the different concept of rationality we have in in, in these frameworks. Rationality in rational expectation meant that the, uh, the decision maker was aware of the, 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 um, of the data generating process and, acting, and, acted, uh, and acted on, uh, on, these, uh, on that. Here, I simply require that the policymaker maximizes his expected uh, utility or minimizes expected loss under the exogenously held belief. This means that basically is not as, is not as lucky as the rational expectation policymaker because he is not bored with the truth, but given what he knows, is rational in this sense and is also benevolent. Uh, then the consistency will be defined uh, in, 
will be defined uh, as an equilibrium uh, as an equilibrium concept, which also depends on the signals received. And we will see that all the all the problems with the recent crisis were were are are precisely the 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 the, the fact that signals received are poorly informative about what uh, what was going on. Okay, so. Uh, with uh, such a, with a, such an equilibrium concept, we we may allow for an equilibrium where where agents know uh, have correct uh, have correct predictions about events uh, that are observed often along the equilibrium path, but may be wrong on uh, on on things that are never observed. Differently from the rational expectation, re remember the Sims quote that uh, it it also equated distributions for. Uh, things that never happened. Okay, uh, then in my in my in my thesis, I will focus on the inflation unemployment dynamics, which has very be, which have been studied extensively in the economic literature, starting from the seminal paper of Phillips in uh, in uh, in late 50s, and on which uh, Sargent with with uh, with John Williamson and and Alon. Uh, used the, the, the self-confirming equilibrium concept to model the, the rise and fall of U.S. inflation. So, but how did it use this? It uses in a in a very uh, narrow sense, in which it defined it defined a, a self-confirming equilibrium as a vector of regression coefficients gamma that satisfies some data consistency condition and the rationality assumption, but. He, had, he added two very important restrictive assumptions that we, we need to relax to have, to, to have our model. That is, he assumed that the data generating process was known up to a parameterization. That is, he, the, the policymaker knew that the, the, knew the functional form, but didn't know the, the, parame the, the parameters of the, of the relevant equation. And moreover, he allowed the, the decision maker to, have, to hold only degenerate beliefs. That is, beliefs concentrated on a particular probability model. Okay? So it, basically, it is as if the policymaker does not recognize that there is a variety of probability models that can describe the economy, is just focused on one, and, and we see whether this can be consistent with the, with the true one. Okay, this formulation allows a, a simple, uh, a simple specification of self-confirming equilibrium as fixed points of, of, of a correspondence from possible that maps uh, possible models into itself that summarize some decision and estimation process. Okay, so uh, given with uh, with Sargent uh, specification, we have some easy is tratability because basically all we have to do is to specify such uh, correspondence var theta. And then we can start the a fixed point, uh, a fixed point problem. Uh, but uh, this comes uh, at the cost of imposing this very restrictive assumption. That is, that, it, uh, that after after all, he, he, he knows the DGP, the data generating process, and he helps uh, 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 the generate beliefs. Okay. So what I am to do uh, is to model is uh, two steps. Is I want to model the decision making that led to the financial crisis. That is, from early 90s to the uh, to the event to the hit of the crisis, and see how it could it could happen that the decision maker, uh, the policy maker, let private sector credit expand so much. And then, as soon as the uh, as the crisis hits, which is modeled basically as the need to inject a massive amount of liquidity. I want to study which action he chooses, basically, if he decides to, to inject such liquidity or not, and how his beliefs uh, are updated. To, do, to accomplish these tasks, I, I will build on a, on a framework uh, uh, introduced by Battigalli, Cerreia, Maccheroni, Marinacci, and Sargent, that allows for a more flexible definition of self-confirming equilibrium than it, it was uh, uh, previously done as a fixed point of uh, some correspondence. That is, uh, uh, we, we do not hold uh, the generated beliefs and the data generating process is not necessarily known. Then I will uh, try to weaken their uh, their um, their concept by assuming that the whole signal distribution is not observed, uh, meaning that uh, the, the policymaker maybe observes, uh, for instance, only the first moment of the signal uh, of the of the signal distribution or or other characteristics. I try to keep it as general as possible. Then starts uh, the 
the, the creati creative part in which I postulate uh, a supposedly true data generating process and apply, the, and apply such tools to, to, to explain the occurrence of the crisis. Okay, so this is my model economy. I model an economy in which the government uh, has only one control variable, which is money supply. That is, that, that can be uh, fixed uh, uh, at, uh, uh, as it wants. Uh, there is no problem of transmission mechanism and, and whatever. And he, he acts to minimize a standard, uh, a standard uh, quadratic loss function in deviation from the natural rates that I'm going to, do, to, to define in, uh, at the end of this slide. So it, those beta zero and rho zero are the natural rates of inflation and unemployment. By natural, I, I will explain what I mean. So the natural rate hypothesis built on Friedman and Phelps, then Lucas and, and, uh, and Sargent basically says that there is an unexploitable trade-off between inflation and unemployment. That is, all the correlation that is seen from the Phillips curve regression stems from those shock epsilon 2, which does not get cancelled. And therefore, uh, we have uh, the, that when inflation rises, unemployment, <coughs> unemployment falls. And, uh, but but it, it cannot be exploited because as soon as the systematic part uh, increases, then it, it, it's going to cancel out in this, in this equation. This is, this is very standard. And, uh, and then uh, everything is, is left is, is to specify the, how those functions, how functions G and F describing so the sort of natural rates uh, are formed. And to do so, I apply to, uh, I, I will, I, I, I'm inspired by the, the, the essays in positive economics by Friedman, and I postulate a quantity theoretic framework with a threshold variable, meaning that the, there is a, 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 a sort of optimal money supply, and if the government provides liquidity less than such threshold, then it, it, it produces unemployment. Basically, it does not uh, give as much money as trade needs. But as soon as the threshold is, uh, is reached, providing extra money produces only inflationary, inflationary pressure without stimulating uh, uh, output further. Okay, so in, in reduced form, uh, by, by changing the, name, the names of, uh, of the parameters and rescaling uh, uh, error terms, I get this, uh, this threshold model. And uh, now start my assumption. I assume that all the parameter vectors, that is B, beta, are, is assumed known. That is, government knows which are the natural rates, which are the correlation between variables, which are the reactions to, the, to under or over funding. So uncertainty is limited to the shocks vector whose distribution is known. So ba basically, it's not relevant for our analysis. But the important part is what the policymaker doesn't really know and it's welfare relevant is the distribution of such a threshold, of such threshold variable. Okay, the, the threshold is a realization of a continuous random variable. And now uh, comes the definition of natural rates. Natural rates are the rates that will prevail if government had full information. That is, if government had new M star. Why? Because we have, a, a, from the loss function, a dislike for inflation and for, uh, for unemployment. The, therefore, if government had full information about M star, then it would set the, the money supply equal to M star. And the rate that will prevail, you see that all the beta ones and uh, row two factors will cancel out, and in expectation, everything will be equal to, to beta zero and row zero. Okay, so now some results which say that, uh, unsurprisingly, the, for, for every belief he, he holds, the, there exists a best reply function that is mapping from the, from the belief else to the, to the action fun, to the action, uh, action set. And, and he says that for every belief you, you hold, the, 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 the optimal action you have to take is to set money supply equal to its expected value under this under this distribution. Okay, then the assumption about the signals is that consequence and signal function coincide. That is, the, that government observes 
uh, inflation and unemployment, which are the, the two wealth-relevant variables. Recall, this, this will be crucial when we will uh, talk about the, 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 the crisis. So, phi, uh, phi hat is the push-forward distribution that uh, a true model economy, which, is, uh, which belongs to capital theta, induces on the signal space, that is the, cro the, the Cartesian product of, of the of pi and mu, which is basically uh, R, R, uh, R2 plus. The, okay. And uh, the phi hat mu is the section taken at the action justified by mu, that is the, a, a function mapping true probability models into signal distribution when action justified by mu, which recalled by the previous uh, result is unique, is, uh, is taken. Then this is a, a, techn um, a technical and assumption, which is that the economy is immediately led to the, to the steady state. That is, immediately after I take an action, then I observe uh, an infinite draw from the, from the stochastic process of the signals, which enable me to, to basically to characterize the whole signal distribution. We are going to relax this afterwards. So basically we are going to study uh, the rest uh, point of um, learning dynamics, which is not modeled. Okay, now, uh, this is uh, built upon the, the work of Battigalli et altri. Uh, the definition of self-confirming belief basically requires that uh, given a true model, a belief on the, on the, on the probability distributions of, uh, of, um, of possible models is self-confirming is self if it assigns positive probability only to uh, models that generate the same signal distribution as the true one when action justified by, by itself is chosen. You see, here there is a, an explicit dependence of the, of the support of, uh, of Mustar on, on Mustar itself. Okay, so, uh, and uh, please notice also that when the belief is, um, is degenerate, that is when it's Dirac, when Basically, uh, uh, we have uh, theta here because the Dirac distribution is the the set of Dirac distribution is isomorphic to to, to theta itself. Then we, we we are we fall back upon the the, the sergeant definition of fixed point of of this correspondence. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is uh, uh, with. Um, when studying cell confirming under limited inference, is I weaken the assumption that all the signal distribution is observed immediately, and I, I, I rather assume that only uh, that the data set is uh, large enough to characterize only some characteristics of the of the signal distribution. Uh, there are possibly many many reasons for explaining this. Basically, is that usually the the the, the number of data available for, for each data generating process is much shorter than, than infinite, <laughs> of course. Then, then basically, what I'm going to do is, is to, de to, to redefine self confirming beliefs as self confirming under limited inference simply uh, by weakening the, the, requirement, uh, the requirement to be, to be, to be self confirming. That is, I only require that. The, the, the induced distribution makes the, the observed characteristic equal. Therefore, I do not require that all the distribution is equal, but only what is observed must, uh, must, uh, must, must be equal to the true probability model. Therefore, it, it should be immediate to notice that limited inference should, does never deprive uh, a belief from its self-confirmation property from the more general setting, because if it's self-confirming uh, in, in general, then every characteristic is the same. The other way around is, is not true, and of course, we have a direct dependence on, of the sets of self-confirming beliefs on the, on the characteristic that is, that is observed. Okay, obviously, the such limited inference ability may have a negative impact on the control performance because basically you are you are lowering your estimation abilities the estimation ability of of the of the policy maker but i show that in the unperturbed economy or, or in in this economy in the pre crisis economy everything works nicely if we observe just the 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 first moment of the inflation unemployment pair that is i observe inflation and unemployment 
expected value, only the first moment, I'm able to recover the uh, uh, expected value of the threshold distribution under the true model, which is the, the objectively optimal action. Therefore, I'm able to, to, to act optimally uh, for, for every action that, uh, that I've chosen before. So, there is a correspondence, var theta in this case, that partitions the collection of possible densities into expectations equivalent block. And this is the result. This, very this is a very important result because it, it characterizes self-confirming beliefs in, uh, in unperturbed economy. That is, a belief is self-confirming if its support is inside the block of the partition uh, characterized by the first moment of the true state distribution. And notice that here we do not have any dependence on, on Mustar does not depend on, on, on the action chosen in this block. And moreover, these two results uh, give the optimality in terms of control and in terms of, of estimation. Indeed, result two says that a self-confirming belief induces the objectively optimal action, that is, learning dynamics leads towards control optimality, and when, when a belief mu is self-confirming, then the policymaker gets to know that the true model is in this uh, lambda mu, that is, he gets to know something true about the true model. He gets to know that it has first moment that is equal to the first moment under, under this distribution. So, in, in the unperturbed economy, economy, what happens is that control and estimation optimality coincide, two and three are, are, are the same, and they are both guaranteed by confirmation, that is, by the learning dynamics. We will see that this is going to break up in the, in, the, in, the, in the crisis, which I model as three fundamental events. Two, which are the pre-crisis one, and then the heating of the crisis. Uh, this, this narrative uh, is, is, uh, is borrowed from, uh, from, the, from the very famous book from Rajan that says, so, firstly, some exogenous forces in the beginning of the 90s increased the liquidity necessary to maintain inflation and employment at, at natural rates. That is, uh, uh, a discontinuity occurs in the, in the, in the distribution of M star, which shifted from uh, theta star to theta tilde, characterized by a by higher first moment. Secondly, what happened is that the private sector stepped in by providing easy credit to, to households, okay? And thus compensating for the insufficient federal credit expansion. So, with this systematic reaction of the private sector, what happens is that, irrespectively of action chosen, the expected unemployment will be at row zero, because if the federal government acts, then it is provided by the federal government. In case of, under, of systematic underfunding, what will happen is that the private sector steps in, provides the, addi the, the additional credit, fills in the gap, and the, the, the data generating process, you see, is up to different uh, noise term is, is, is exactly the same. So, these are the two events which happened in between uh, 1990s and 2007. Then, at some point, the quality of credit deteriorates, and uh, there is the need of, of bailout, which comes in the form of the need of a massive liquidity injection. Okay, these are the three events that, uh, that led to the crisis. I want to study the reaction, the decision making and, and reaction to the crisis of two different policy makers possibly, uh, or uh, there is, uh, two different policy, two different policy makers, always assuming that, and this is crucial, the signal vector that is what is observed only includes the inflation and unemployment pair. That is, the uh, the model changes, but signal received do not change. Government continues observing on inflation and unemployment. Uh, and the amount of private sector outstanding is not, obs uh, is not observable. You see that this is, this is a problem, because uh, also we maintain that, that only the first moment, the, the first moment is, um, is observed. This is a problem because unemployment is no more informative about anything, because unemployment is, is stuck at row zero, irrespectively of action chosen. That is, the, the unemployment information does not give information about the true density anymore. The only informative element of the pair being the, the inflation level, which gives information 
on the right tail of 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 um, of the threshold density and the fact that the the expectation vector was was a signal sufficient summary before relied precisely upon the fact that inflation was uh, uh, informative about the right uh, the right tail of the distribution while unemployment was informative about the left tail and linearly combined they 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 gave the the the, the expected value now Uh, this, is, this is actually an assumption. Uh, I try to motive. Well, uh, at least uh, at some point, uh, for instance, by, by reading the Rajan book, uh, quantifying the, the the size of the shadow banking system was, uh, I, I mean, extremely difficult to do, and uh, and yes, so that's that's why uh, I I've said that. Let me say that also I've, I've, I've said that observing private credit could be an escape route from, from the bad self confirmation from the bad robust, uh, robust belief. But of, of course this is a, this is a crucial assumption, uh, which I mean it's, it's justified by, by this fact that banks were reluctant to make uh, this information available and, and above all of all the, the generation of this, this huge shadow banking system of which government had. Which are lending to 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 to, to households. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes. The the household economy. Yeah. Yes, I would have to, to work and to, to, to give a, a more precise justification of, of, of this assumption because, it, because it's really crucial, because it, it, it basically kills the, the, the information structure of, uh, of the economy. I'm going to maintain this assumption, even though maybe if afterwards we can talk about this, it's extremely helpful. Okay, now, uh, normatively, I, I distinguish two cases. Uh, in the first case, the, depending on the policymaker's sophistication, in the first case, he's totally naive in the sense that he's unaware of the mere, exi mere existence of private sector intervention. That is, he continues believing that the true data generating process is the, the one before the crisis, uh, and, and we will see what happens. And the, the, other, uh, the other policymaker is quite more sophisticated in the sense that he recognizes that. The, the discontinuity in the DGP, but is only unable, given the, the, the assumption about the signal vector, it's only unable to quantify the, the amount of private sector, private credit outstanding. Okay, uh, so uh, pr probably I, I should just present the, the, the first cases and now, in the, uh, in the first case, we, which is also interesting because it, it, it breaks down the, the equivalence of control and, uh, and estimation and estimation optimality. Uh, I cited this, uh, this policy maker, which is totally unaware. And in this framework, the, the objectively optimal action is, uh, is to take no, is to give no, no liquidity. Why? Because the private sector will step in and will provide all the liquidity that is necessary, and you lower the probability that, your, uh, that the threshold variables goes below your, uh, your money supply and therefore pr produces inflation. Okay? Now, uh, government, which we assume is totally, una totally naive, totally unaware, continues providing money equal to the first moment of the pre-shock distribution, A star equal to the expected value of under the pre-shock uh, distribution. But what happens is that observed the characteristics surprising the government in the sense that unemployment is stuck at, at row zero, where, while inflation, uh, the inflation observation is below the one that is expected. So a rational decision maker is induced to believe that a structural change, that a structural, uh, change hit, the, hit the economy. So what he's going to do, which is when he's, uh, when he's uh, surprised by, by this observation, he does not invoke uh, a data generating process uh, innovation. What he does is that he changes the, the, the natural rates that he holds uh, true. 
and he adjusted the natural rates, the believed natural rates, to new levels such that the observed signal conform with the pre-crisis data generating process. Again, this is a behavioral assumption which characterizes how uh, government reacts to things that surprise him. Basically, he, he does not have an answer ready for, for, for the observation he, he has in hand. So he has to, to, to make some adjustment of the data generating process and maybe is less costly to uh, change the parameterization than to change the whole structure of, uh, of, uh, of the believed economy. So such assumption simply makes the model discontinuity undetectable, meaning that a uh, belief that was self-confirming remains self-confirming. But what, what happens is that now the objectively optimal action and the action that allows correct inference on the true parameterization happen to, uh, to be at the end point of the set of action that can be induced by beliefs that are, that are self-confirming. Basically why? Because every, parameteriz every parameterization that gives a first moment below the, the true one becomes self-confirming because of the model discontinuity and of the, of the behavioral assumption. So we have slackness of the requirement to be self-confirming, and so we have a, a, a compact set of, of actions that can be induced by, by self-confirming belief. And we have that zero, which is the objectively optimal action. Zero is just a simplification. I mean, the minimum that it can provide, of course, it cannot completely shoot down the, the economy. It's, it's made just, just for exposition simplicity. And this action is the, is the optimal for control, and this action is the optimal from an estimation point of view, because playing such action, then he gets to update his belief and, 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 to, remain, and to remain believing that this is the true, uh, the true uh, first moment of, uh, of, the, of the signal distribution. So uh, there is an implicit trade-off between estimation and control. If you remember, all the three characteristics uh, that I gave uh, for, uh, for the amperturbed economy, it breaks down because self-confirmation self does not guarantee either control optimality, nor, neither control optimality nor, uh, nor, uh, nor estimation, some estimation uh, uh, reduced to the, to the vector sufficient for control optimality. And, uh, and moreover here we have that if you perform well in terms of control, you perform badly in terms of um, of estimation, and this poor performance in terms of estimation will become crucial when the cri when the crisis hits. Okay, so let me skip just to the to the to the conclusion. I will skip the second the second the second the second case. Here, the crisis is modeled as the need to inject uh, such uh, such massive uh, liquidity into the economy. So, when evaluating the consequence of such massive uh, intervention. Then the policymaker who holds that the true state distribution is very low will think that even the first dollar supplied in excess will put uh, inflationary pressure and therefore it will be more reluctant to take the, the correct action. Here again, I say correct, but, uh, but I assume that it's correct to, to, to bail the private sector out. So it's not much uh, a personal position, but uh, I mean, okay. And whereas if the, if the, the policymaker recognizes that the, the model discontinuity happened, he has uh, some, um, some tools, to, some, some, some tools to, to prevent the crisis from happening, and, uh, which are voluntary experimentation, meaning that as soon as you recognize that you may be wrong, you do some off-equilibrium decisions to generate an off-equilibrium data set which allows you to estimate better. That is, there is a trade-off. You incur uh, short-term losses in order to, to gain in the future. Or, as, uh, as, uh, as, as you were, were pointing out, you may, you may try to, to find a proxy for, for credit, uh, for, for private credit outstanding, because once you add such information, then the, also the the estimation part of the problem because exa be becomes exactly equal to the pre-crisis uh, pre uh, uh, environment and, and self-confirmation will lead to, to control optimality. But then, if, 
if it's if it's assumed that for some sort of political pressure or or scarce quality of the data set is not able, then when the the crisis hits, it will accept it as as the as the as evidence of the fact that it was wrong, and is more ready to take uh, the the. The, the the optimal action. Okay, so yes, that's what I've done. Thank you. Thanks very much, Elia. Are there questions? Richard, I think Richard has a yeah. question. Well, I, I, I didn't, <laughs> there's lots that I didn't understand. So, that's, uh, so uh, can you just explain why the uh, unemployment rate becomes uninformative? I mean, why it gets stuck at yes. zero, zero? Because of this, uh, because of this fundamental event here. Because the private sector steps in and, and provides the, 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 the credit so that if uh, I go back to the pre-crisis, exactly, to the pre-crisis uh, model economy, basically the private sector systematically intervenes when M is below M star and provides that, that gap between, uh, you see, it provides a shock so that the sum with this is zero, and a negative, uh, a negative epsilon two shocks, and this intervention makes basically this part completely disappear from the from the data generating process, and therefore the unemployment rate. Uh, remember this expression with 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 them star becomes becomes simply this, in which uh, unemployment is, uh, is is in expectation stuck at row zero. This is this interaction coming from uh, from inflation. This is uh, and these two shocks are. Uh, this is the shock in uh, the zero mean shock from from the fact that private sector does not intervene perfectly, but is essentially in the spirit the same as epsilon two. And this it's it is exactly the 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 step in by the by the private sector that that sort of make the the unemployment signal uninformative. And that's also why the uh, the amount of, of private uh, credit outstanding becomes the estimation relevant variable, because it's, it's, it's exactly the same as the previous uh, row two times uh, m star minus minus m that allowed for to, to, to recall the the the, the state distribution. Okay, so, so what, so if the exactly. Exactly. Okay. Yes. Exa exactly. What uh, I, I didn't mention that due to time constraint. But if uh, the the private sector does not step in, then we are basically in the in the pre-crisis framework, uh, with the only exception that the economy is artificially put outside the equilibrium. But we have seen that with some learning dynamics, which I, I don't go into uh, which I'm not going to model because I studied the rest point of a of a learning dynamics is going to learn that the model discontinuity hit and is going to adjust uh, his, uh, his decision. So it's the, it's the fact that both the true data generating process and the threshold di distribution change that made room for, for, for such uh, an event to occur. I think now that's a good place to stop because we, we, we're quite late actually. So let's thank Elia again.